when we um when we do fall out of quote unquote balance in some way, when we maybe don't have our priorities in order, or at least this is what people think. People diagnose themselves with this thing called burnout. And I've been mm. quite intentional with my words there because I have my own opinions on burnout. I don't really mm. think burnout is what people think it is. People think of burnout as basically doing too much work. Mm. I think most people, 90% of people would say that burnout is when you do too much work. Mm. It's a big topic in conversation now, this subject matter of burnout. What do you think burnout is? So there's some amazing research done by uh, two British researchers, many of Stansfield and Candy, and they concluded that um, a toxic work environment is not the work you do, it's the type of work you do. And so they wanted to see, the, 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 the study was what kind of work correlates with uh, increased rates of depression and anxiety disorders. And they found two conditions that raise the rates the kind of anxiety and depression. They literally the kind of jobs that make you sick psychologically. And those two conditions are high expectations coupled with low control. Coupled with. Exactly, low control. So high expectations and low control. If you have high expectations and high control, no problem. People rise to the occasion. But when you have a job with high expectations and low control, that's burnout. Why? Because it's a lack of agency. I'm expected to do all this and I can't, right? I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. But as much as I do, my, my, the, the, I don't have enough agency to meet these expectations. So let's zoom in on both of those. I'm really compelled by this idea of low control. Mm -hmm. um, when people think of control, that can mean a number of things. Is that the ability to make decisions for myself on how to accomplish the challenge? To affect the, the outcome. Okay. Right. So if you have, um, uh, you know, you're, you're a small cog in a big machine, but you have these very high expectations, but it doesn't all depend on you. There Bureaucracy, are other people, exactly. Low budgets, decisions. circumstances beyond your control that is hard. No matter how hard you work, you can't meet someone's expectations. Why? I'm trying to think from the the psychological discomfort framework. Mm -hmm. Why that that environment of high expectations, this being pulled this way, but then mm -hmm. being suppressed on this end, would cause burnout and burnout i guess we have to define it as that what is it it's this sort of psychological overwhelm which it's giving up which makes I you give up yeah it's uh i think it's because it's the it's the definition of death right schopenhauer describes life as anything that tries to affect its environment life is defined by something that affects its outside environment changes where it is to its benefit in some way that's what an, a, a live organism is so if you cannot change your environment, you cannot change your circumstances, it feels like death. And eventually you give up. It's, uh, you, you learn helplessness, where eventually it's not worth continuing to try because you can't affect the outcomes. I've always thought of burnout as being somewhat sort of intrinsically attached to meaning. Hmm. And maybe that's, that's exactly what you're describing there because you're being robbed of your ability to affect your outside environment, which maybe is what meaning is. Meaning is, I think, the, can be the relief valve. So if you are toiling, I mean, you think about the role of religion in, in many people's lives historically, religion tells you that even though your lot in life may not change, right? There is reward to come. So you, are, you have agency, you have control. It's just that re the reward is delayed. Mm -hmm. So even if your life is awful now, someday it'll be better. That's, that gives you agency. So that's meaning, right? That gives you that, that meaning, that purpose of, it's coming someday. But if you believe that there's nothing you can do to get that reward, that it makes no difference, uh, then the only logical thing to do is to quit. I might be totally wrong here, but I, I think the reason I thought meaning was so important was because I, when, you, when you think about people in roles that typically feel that burnout, it seemed to me that it was like monotonous, tedious work where, you know, maybe like working on a production line where you're doing very, very long hours of work that is absent of meaning for you. You don't really care about the work, but you're being pressed to do long hours. So that was my kind of understanding mm. of it because I tried to contrast it to areas where I'd never get burnout. Mm -hmm. You know, watching mm. Manchester United play mm. or playing video games or whatever. And I thought, what's the difference? Well, it's because of my sort of subjective meaning or enjoyment of the task. So I thought the enjoyment and the meaning part was central somehow to bur becoming burnt out. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if it's necessarily uh, requires meaning per se. I mean, you see people working two, three jobs uh, sometimes, you know, when they're, when they're getting started from base level just to feed their kids. Mm. Um, it's like they can do very repetitive, boring work and they do it uh, because they are affecting change. They have agency. They can see the results. They need to feed their families. And this idea of agency and control is fundamentally linked to our physio ph physiological health as well, which I find quite surprising that people that have greater degrees of control in their professional endeavors are healthier. Right. This concept of locus of control, right, where it's external locus of control versus internal locus of control, mm -hmm. where people who have external locus of control believe that things happen to them. People have who have internal locus of control believe that they affect change. And what's fascinating about this is that uh, people who have internal locus of control on every metric of well-being do better. They're wealthier, they have more, uh, they have better relationships, they're healthier. Every metric of well-being, having an internal locus of control benefits you. Even when your circumstances dictate that you shouldn't think that you have that much control. Even when you're in a really awful situation, believing you have agency makes you better off, even if it's not true. <laughs> because that mindset, again, back to what we were saying earlier about how mindset affects what we do. If you believe willpower is limited, you will act as such, right? I used to come home uh, after a long day of work and say, oh, you know what? I've had a hard day. Uh, I don't have any more willpower. My willpower has been exhausted like we talked about earlier. Give me that pint of Ben and Jerry's. I'm going to sit on the couch and, and eat my ice cream. Because I believed I, I was spent, right? But it was in my head. Whereas people who believe that they have agency, they do have control, live much healthier, better lives. This raises the point about responsibility, which is quite mm. a controversial point for yeah. some reason. Funny that that is, right? <laughs> like, why, why is it so controversial, do you think? I think it's this, uh, this idea, rightfully so, of not victim blaming. But I don't think that that is incongruous, that you don't have to blame victims as well as saying that we should take as much responsibility as we possibly can. Um, so in, in my line of work, you know, I, I'm fairly controversial because I wrote Hooked, How to Build Habit-Forming Products, and then I wrote Indistractable, about how to uh, control your attention and choose your life. And many people see those as, as opposites, right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't write Hooked and Unhooked. I wrote Indistractable uh, because it's about having our cake and eating it too. It's about having both. We can have the best of both worlds. Uh, that we can build apps, we can build technologies that help us exercise and learn new languages and, and stay healthy. We can use these, these amazing technologies for good, but we can also find ways to not get distracted from the, from the devices or whatever the distraction might be that lead us away from what we really want. Um, but yeah, sometimes people will say, yeah, but that's, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're blaming the victim here, we're, that we're all victims of these technology. The technology companies are doing it to us, right? The Social Dilemma movie tells us that our brains are being hijacked. And uh, they interviewed me for the Social Dilemma movie. Did you see it, by the way? I did. And I, did? Yeah. Okay, so they interviewed me. And I know you've had uh, Johan Hari on the show, and I have big issues with, with his whole thesis. Because it's, it's a line around, it's not your fault. It's being done to you. And look, there is no doubt that these companies design their products to be engaging. That's the point, right? Do we want, hey, Netflix, stop making your show so interesting. Uh, uh, Apple, your phones are too user-friendly, right? That's ridiculous. That's the point of these products. We want them to be engaging. We pay for the privilege of having them be engaging. So it's ridiculous to think that somehow they're going to stop doing that. Uh, it's also ridiculous to think that the government, in all its brilliant wisdom is going to figure out how to regulate these companies properly, right? We see every time I come to Europe, I can't use the internet because these stupid GDPR rules that I have to constantly click accept, accept, I don't even know what I'm clicking on. They're so annoying. We see what happens when government tries to regulate these companies. Most of the time, they're incredibly ham-fisted. So do we just sit here? I'm not, I'm not saying I'm anti-regulation. I'm for smart regulation. But in the meantime, what are we doing? We're just going to sit here and wait, right? Please, Zuckerberg, stop addicting me. That's ridiculous. There's so much we can do. Starting with not thinking we're powerless in all realms of our life. Again, even when circumstances are beyond your control, it benefits you. It behooves you to believe you do have agency. You do have control. You're going to be better off as opposed to saying, well, there's nothing I can do. Because what do people do when they believe they're powerless? Quit. Nothing. Yeah. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.